Welcome to Spilling the Tequila, the podcast that brings you the tequila spilling energy, but without the hangover. <laughs> I'm Grace. And I'm Sonny Joe, yo, and welcome to Spilling the Tequila. God, I really can't say spilling the tequila properly. It's a very tongue twister no, for me. I'm always you would like think spilling. after like a year. Yeah. Nearly, fine. well, we're going to celebrate a year. We're going to be a year in November. I already looked it up. 18th, Woo, I think it is. We should no, have 22nd. a party. We will have a party. We'll give one of our listeners something for free. Maybe that poster of us, the, the cardboard cutout. <laughs> Do you have that? I think Surly's might have it. I'll, I'll check. Okay. I'll check. I'll check yeah, we'll give away a cardboard cutout of us. Of us. <laughs> <laughs> But welcome back to the show. As you know, usually we have a shot of tequila, but uh, we're just not for this episode because I've, like I said last week, I was on a six-day bender. It was five and days also, and then it turned into another day. Also, this month I was supposed to be doing sober September. That's true, but she didn't do that, so I we're just not going to have it, a shot for this. Yeah. But if we were having a shot of tequila, we would be having. I would be having a coconut one right now. What would you be having? Oh, uh, look, I think I'd like to go back to the Casamigos. It's been a while. and um, Is that the Glenn Clooney one? George Glenn Clooney. Clooney. George Clooney. This is why Glenn. I don't need tequila. Glenn. Who's Glenn? <laughs> Glenn Clooney. <laughs> See? What did you put in my drink? Glenn Clooney. Glenn. Anyway, let's start the show, guys. Uh, uh, as you know, Grace... Uh, I'll do it, but anyone that orders Uber Eats, I know you order it a lot. Not that I'm exposing you. I think I'll, I have a lot of friends that order it a lot. There's something wrong uh-huh. with that. Mm-hmm. I deleted the app. I got it back last week and ordered it when I was hungover after the six day bender and ordered Mexican and McDonald's. So yeah. I hear you. We all do it. It's convenient and it's the new way of life. But I sent Grace a TikTok today. I think it was about um, uh, it was an English lady on yes. TikTok. And she was on her balcony and she's seen the Uber driver on a scooter and he had the bag and he opened up the top of the cup of the McDonald's and he sipped it and it looked like it was a really hot day in England that day. And then he put the lid yes. back on, just a little sip. He didn't do it out of the straw. Uh-huh. And then he went up the stairs and she's like, excuse me, who's that for? And he goes, sorry, are you such and such? He goes, no, no, no. Who is that Uber delivery for? She goes, I've reported you. I've reported you. And he was like acting like dumb because he was busted. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I saw you. She goes, did you, did you take a drink at that person's drink? You did, didn't you? You need to take that back. I've already reported. She's like, uh, sorry, I'm looking for 24. Like, (laughs) like playing dumb. And she's like, I busted you. And then I messaged Grace and she's like, oh my God, the chips. And I didn't know what Grace meant by the chips, but now I agree. How many times have you ordered McDonald's from Uber Eats? And the chips are just like, they're missing. There's just uh-huh. hardly no chips in there. 100%. And I'm not saying this to all Uber drivers or deliverers because that's a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a bad thing to say that all of them are doing this. Generalize, yes. Yeah, I shouldn't generalize because that's not good because they're, I've had amazing delivery drivers that I give five stars stuff all the time that are really, really fast and everything's perfect and the food's still hot. But yes, yeah. I've received the chip. The no chips. And do you think that they're eating the chips? Yes. Yeah. And here's why. Because yeah. if you go to McDonald's, right, or yeah. wherever you go and you order, say, you order a large chips and sometimes you look at it and go, wow, this is like a thick chip. Like they've absolutely packed this to the brim. That's awesome. And then sometimes it's like, oh, there could be more. But it's still relatively full. Whereas I have had times where it's like half full in a large or a medium-sized chips. Now, I know I'm not an idiot. I know that if you scoop the chips at McDonald's and you're putting them in a large, there's not people out there who just put in half a large chips. I re- oh, we know. No, because been... they just want to do their job and get home and scoop their chips and get it done. Like they're not in here trying to like shake half the chips out of the scooper so they can give you a dodgy thing. Like it's, sorry, it's been eaten. We've been eating McDonald's since we were two. We know how this works. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're all professionals with McDonald's. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think they definitely eat it. And I don't blame them. Could you imagine doing a drive and you could smell those chips? I, I'd i probably take a cheeky one or two. You'd probably would too. Do you want to know what else I believe has happened to me? Because it what? happens all too often. They if farted I in your drink. You saw, you saw rainbow oil in your Coke. Ooh, no. <laughs> when I order, if I order... um like Betty's Burgers, 
Yum, but overrated, yeah. Uh, yeah, but here's the reason why I order Betty's is because mm. their thick shakes are like out of this world. They're they're like a dessert. So when I, I really you always, want... You always tell me this. Anytime I travel with you, you always <laughs> tell me this. Just putting it when out When I want a burger and a shake, it has to be from Betty's because they're the only ones that have good shakes. Anyway, McDonald's all too often the shakes... No, because it's not real chocolate. It's fake chocolate. Anyway, the shake doesn't turn up. And sorry, once again, no coincidence. I know people are like, far out, these Betty's Burger shakes are good because they're always hanging around Betty's trying to get a pickup from there. And then they just think, oh, I'll just take the shake. And then it's no skin off their nose because they know that I'm going to go to Uber and say, oh, you know, Betty's forgot my shake. So it's not like they're losing any money as the delivery driver. Like they're just ripping off Betty's. That's true. That's Mm -hmm. true. If anyway, anyone sorry, out there has had over. any, if anyone out there's had any stories about their Uber drivers, or doesn't have to be Uber drivers, it could be Deliveroo or anything like that, where your their drinks have been drunk and their food's been eaten, mm. please send us an email to spillingthetequila at gmail.com so we can share it on the show. That would be yes, great because I guarantee there's a million stories out there about it. I agree. Um, what I was going to say, oh, so you know my mates, uh, Craig and Austin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they were brothers from they, another mother. Brothers from another mother. They were talking um, that they saw on TikTok, which I wanted to ask you and our listeners and viewers as well, that there's a thing on TikTok saying that all, because you're a woman and I'm a man, all women uh, face the, sh- sorry, put their backs to the shower and all men put their, like, so they say this is a spray. Yeah. All men stand with the spray and all women have their back. And when they said that before you answer it, I don't. I put my back to it. What do you do? I put my back to it. Yeah, same. And yeah. I'm a man and I'm what? not doing that. Do men actually well, stand there and go, uh... I've asked I've asked a lot of, well, not a lot of, but a lot of my mates and all the ones that said that they do stand and face it, they're all six foot two and six foot three. So I get that because that means they're higher than the the shower, oh, the head. shower so when, head so yeah. when you're standing there the shower head's here and it's just hitting your body and your willy of course that's great yeah. but if you're normal height like me yeah then i'm drowning in the water in face. you know what i mean it's going in my face so yeah. craig and austin no it's not that all men do that it's just i think if you're tall because i think craig's like six foot one and like austin's like six foot three yeah so they're tall like they're tall i'm only yeah. like five eleven so but what if um, it's like a waterfall shower head I are oh, the one that's directly on you like that. Yeah. I stand just underneath it. Cause you got no choice. Yeah. I don't um, like them. They're overrated. Who? Oh, those waterfall shower heads. Oh, I thought you were talking about my mate, Austin and Craig. I was like, we You're cannot ready be ready to fight. <laughs> oh my thing's coming um, off. Yeah, um, no, definitely not. Back to. Um hey. Hey. I about this the other day. Oh, hey. Have you um have you this is really funny and I can't believe this has never been brought up on conversations anywhere and I just thought about this yesterday because that's just how I am, you know me. I'm like, I'm like a ping pong machine. Yeah. with my thoughts. But um have you ever seen when a dog two dogs have sex but they get stuck and they're both backwards and they're connected to each other? No. Have you seen that? No. So So why I'm why I'm telling you the story. Can you Google it for me? Why dogs get stuck together when they have sex? So many times in my life growing up, I've seen dogs. So think of two dogs, Grace. Think of Grace. Think of like I'm a dog and this is my bum here. And yeah. then you're a dog. And you're can you do it the same as me what I'm doing now? Like face. So the the viewers can't come and see it. Is my... can... wait, is it you're like... facing the other way? This you... way. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, he's not watching the video. And after they have sex, sometimes they get stuck and I'm trying to walk this way and you're trying to walk that way. And you humans have to un- unstuck. What? Yeah. Did you Google it? No, you because to- you made me get up. Um, dogs. Oh, sorry. Why do you... Oh, let me just ask Siri. Hey, Siri, why do dogs get stuck together after they oh, have sex sometimes? I've- okay. Oh, you go. I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah, of course she doesn't. <laughs> She's PG. Dogs get stuck during mating due to a process called 
copulatory tie, which is a stage in intercourse and helps keep the semen of the male dog secured inside the female for impregnation. It can last from five to 30 minutes, depending on the dog breed and individual dog's behavior and anxiety levels. Oh, so it's like if you want to get pregnant, like that old wives' tale. I don't know if it's a wives' tale or not or if it's real, that um, like if I was trying to get pregnant, for example, after having sex, I would lay on the ground with my legs against a wall um, so that like it all like flows. Wait, that's how – that's the position you have to be in to have to uh- – so it flows, the semen flows through. Well, that's like the old wives' tale. So that's not true. Well, I don't know. Oh, right. People okay. do it still, I think. Yeah, right. Well, what did, what did, um, what's her name? What's the Kardashian, the oldest one's name with her husband? Courtney. They're always looking at each other. Yeah. Courtney. Yeah. What, what did they do? They did that. something with their semen. They did something with his semen for them, for her to fall pregnant. Well, she felt pregnant. So that it must was have just worked. IVF. No, but she went to this. I, I watched the episode. Anyway, I know what IVF is. Um, she I thought did they something... just did IVF. Oh, okay. No, they did, they did something more where they, oh, I think like, I don't know, not, I don't know. I have to look it up. Like maybe he okay. didn't come for a month or something or anyway. Uh, uh, anyway, so yeah, dogs. I can't believe you haven't seen it, but no. I hope now <laughs> that, I've to- uh, that I've told you this because it's so funny. They look really sad and they're like this. They're literally stuck together. And it's like, Everyone knows I had sex because we're stuck together and they're trying to, and they're connected to each other and it won't unlock. It's really weird. It's so sad. Oh, well, I I've guess seen it maybe that's four nature. times in my life. I know, I know. You've but seen it like, four times in real life, in life or like on the internet? In real life. In real life. No, I don't even think I've ever seen dogs having sex. Are you serious? Do- my friend's dogs have sex with my leg all the time. You know how they do, do- on the leg ever i've never had a dog hump me on the leg you've never had a dog hump you on the oh God. no i think i give off the vibe that i wouldn't want to reciprocate that oh your voice went weird then when you've been drinking milk and it gets that uh. there's no milk in this it's just water oh it looks milky um wow can't believe you've never been humped by a dog i've been never. humped by many dogs whose house was i at the other day and the dog was i just <laughs> I just let it be. I was at someone's house the other day. I actually just put my leg out. I'm like, let him be, let him be. Oh, Emma, my mates, Emma and Will, their dog. Um, yeah, their dog. I'm having a mind blank because I'm hungover. Um, I've got to say there's, the name. Dog there's names. a very, there's that a dog... very funny video of um, while George W. Bush was president of the United States, uh, the Pope came. And his dog, as in George Bush's dog, humped the Pope's leg. Shut <laughs> up. Are you serious? You need to send me you need to send me that after we finish this episode. It's That's so amazing. Funny. What did the Pope do? He was just like, oh. Wow. Wow. Oh my yeah. God, Grace. Yeah, yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> That's anyway. hilarious. Hey, so my topic, my last topic is, which is like my main topic. They're just, yes. you know, little, little flows of like, do you do this? Do you do this at home? Uh-huh. Um, is, do you just, do you listen to Triple J? Not often. So any of our listeners who aren't from Australia, Triple J is like a radio station in Australia. And it's more of your, like, I would say indie. Yeah. Indie. Yeah. Like, What's yeah. that like indie one in the UK? Like, is it BBC two or BBC three? Don't know. I haven't spent. I've only been there for vacay. I've never lived there. No, but they cool, post those cool like TikTok and YouTube videos and stuff. Anyway, right. Anyway, there's Triple J, and I was like, you know, you think, but Triple J is meant to play artists that are unsigned, and then they get big there. You know what I mean? Like, and mm. then everyone knows who they are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not your Today FM and stuff where it's bought out by record labels and it's like the top forty and etc. That's yeah. kind of what the radio station is. But one thing I've noticed with Triple J is it's I've just nicknamed it the the or someone else might have as well the thirty curse the thirty curse for women on Triple J. If you're a woman singer, yes, yeah, Triple J will love you. So say you're a singer, Grace, they will play you if you know if you're good and they liked you and stuff. For example, um, you know Julia Stone, you know Julia Stone, love her, yeah. yeah. Um, Sarah, Sarah Blackout, Missy Higgins, you know, I'm just kind of name a few artists that Triple J would play. They always played them. Yeah. 
But as soon as they, these female artists get into their thirties, Triple J does not play them at all. Does not play them. So for example, there's an Australian singer called G Flip right now, who you probably mm-hmm. know because she's yeah. They will flog her. Triple J love her. They'll play her. Yeah. She, well, you watch. She'll get into her 30s. They will not play her. But if you're a male oh. artist in your 30s, they play you. So, for example, um, what's a Julia? What's Julia Stone's brother's name? Angus. Um, Angus. Duh. <laughs> I can't believe I asked that. Um, he's in a band called Lemonheads. I think it is. Yeah. Um, like another side project. He's in his 30s. They play him, but they won't play Julia Stone. They just stop playing females in their 30s the reason why i'm bringing this up is is because you and i well any australian we're so proud of kylie minogue right now because she's number one her album's number one in 40 countries she's 55 years old america's late to the party they're loving her now with this album they're freaking out like wow how have we not heard of her she's 55 this is insane so age should never be a thing for males or females in music it just shows you people like kylie minogue or even sia who's in her 40s and stuff who are just you know, top of the charts, still bringing out the music. And no matter what age you are, mm. we are loving it. Mm-hmm. There, sh- there shouldn't be any ageism. Whereas in with Triple J, for, if you have a look, I'm not saying all artists, but have a look for some reason, they just stop playing females in their 30s when they get into their 30s, which isn't even old. 30s is so young. You're not even developed as an artist till you get into your 30s. Do you know what I mean? Like that's who you're, when you get into your thirties, that's when you know who you are and who you're becoming and stuff. Twenties, you're young, teens, yeah, you're way too. Yeah, Triple J. I, I got to say that they're a little bit holier than thou for me, because they've, you know, I don't know, I don't know. It just seems like okay, Triple J is so progressive on every view ever, and is the first to adopt it, and which is great. Good, good for them. Good for them. But like, um probably a little bit, I don't know, misogynistic to suggest mm. that women are too old to be making good music that can be played on Triple J. Mm. And that's so true what you're saying about Missy Higgins now that I'm like when you say it and you think about it and you're like, oh, yeah, like Missy Higgins still releases music or mm-hmm. but she's just not on there anymore. I don't Nairi's know. Nairi's another, I don't know if you remember Nairi. I remember Nairi. She was, she's amazing. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Do not play her anymore. in her thirties. Yeah, in her thirty. And I think well, a good example for this as well is, I think it's BBC One in the UK. Yeah, you know, they got a lot, you know the one. It's like got a number with it. They got a lot of flogging because they did not play Padam Padam for Kylie Minogue at all, and it's the biggest song around the world and stuff. Oh, and the why reason is they? they don't. I don't think they play anyone over the age of thirty on that on that. Um, Are you serious? Label. Yeah, I'm serious. They don't play, and she's like in her fifties, so they're not going to play her at all. I read it. I read right. an article today that I know so bad. So what? Why are you putting a limit? Like, if it's a good song, all music should be out there. We should be able to listen to it. I don't like these stations capping it from the age. Sorry, I also never think about like how old someone is if I hear a Correct. song. I'm never like, Even oh, I. I wonder how old they are. Like, who it's cares? Like a, it's like it's like Australian song. Idol. Do you know you can only audition for straight? It's up. Yes. To, not even thirty. 28. Yeah. 28. So you can't even go when you're 29. Like what is Which that? Which doesn't make even... sense for Australia because we're an aging society. I know. It's weird. I know. I know. I'd love to watch like an 80 year old get up there on Australian Idol. Well, old Australian Idol used to have older people. Remember? Don't I you think remember? it's awesome. It's like yeah, the golden exactly. bachelor. Yeah. It's true. Fabulous. That's, that's oh, I can't wait to watch that with you. Yeah. I know. Or you're watching that with your mum. I haven't started yet, but I will be. Um, the for any of our listeners who don't know the new series of the bachelor in the usa is called the golden bachelor and it's a man who i think he's like 70 or 75 and all 75 i think yeah 75 and all the women on the show are over the age of 60 mm. which i'm and they're amazing such a they fan look amazing of. i love all the people grace and i me too i have a soft spot grace yeah. and i um watched the trailer and mm-hmm. um we both looked at each other and like, does he have hearing aids on? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's what I love about it. He was like, good. He looked like a guy, like an older man who was from Bondi, really tan with hearing aids in a suit. Yeah. it's. I think yeah. we were just like, because we never see that on TV, but it's Correct. normal. So normal. It's but so we just normal. never see it. It's great. I, I love it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fun one to watch. Oh, it's going to be so good. Okay. I've anyway, got a- that's. That's for me. That's me for today. What do you got for me today, Grace? Well, I got a little interesting fact, which isn't my main thing, but do you know why James Bond orders a martini shaken, not stirred? No, but I want to know. 
So when you stir a martini, right, and you have the Mm. ice, you have the vermouth and the vodka or the gin, you're combining what's melting from the ice, but there's not much melting from the ice, if that makes sense. Mm. So it's all alcohol, pure alcohol, basically. And whatever water comes from the ice, it gets diluted by the alcohol. Whereas if you shake a martini with the ice, the Mm. water that comes off the ice sits on the top of the martini. So when he's drinking it, he's not actually getting drunk because he's a good spy. He's just getting like this thin water veil from the top of the martini. So why is he ordering it then? Because he's spying on someone. Yeah, to look like Like, he's out uh, at a bar drinking. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, fun fact. fact. Just to add into that, something little as well, when you said martini, I was the first one to turn 18 out of my friends when I left high school. Yes. And when I was 18, the first, this is the first thing I did. I kid you not, you just triggered my memory. I went to the bar. I ordered a martini, the one mm-hmm. that you just said then. Never had mm-hmm. a cocktail before like that. And I only yeah. ordered that because I've always seen it in the movies. And I thought that's what adults order. Yes. So I wanted to order it. And when I had it, I was like, Ugh. I did that. Ugh. Like yes. that. It was awful. Did not like it. Didn't even finish it. That's an awful tasting drink. It's a very required taste. I think you like them, don't you? I like them. I used to drink them like a lot when yeah. I was 18. <laughs> um, and then after that, I played the pokies. I put 20 bucks in because I saw Do adults do that. I uh, had a cigarette while playing the pokies. Yeah, I did. got it all out of my system. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is boring. I didn't get it. So, yeah. <laughs> Fun fact. Fun fact. Anyway, let's go to your story, Gracie. Okay. So my story is, you know, that, um, well, you like them as well. Weird news stories. Oh, love it. Give it to me. Don't threaten me with a good time. Okay, in Mexico. Okay, so fun fact for anyone who doesn't know this about me is I love, there's a few things that I'm like weirdly obsessed with. One of them is tornadoes and the second one is aliens. How did I not know that you're obsessed with tornadoes? Oh, didn't you know I have this weird obsession with tornadoes? Oh, really? We've never watched like storm chases together. Oh, I love storm chases. Oh my God. Like I could just talk about tornadoes all day and all night. I'm really? obsessed. Yes. How funny. You weirdo. Yeah. I love it. I know. <laughs> What's that movie with Helen Hunt? Twister. Um, Twister. Oh, yes. I think that's what sparked it when I was a little kid. I was like, oh. Anyway. Um, I love tornadoes and I love aliens. I love well, you, that's one thing we have in common because I'm obsessed yeah. with aliens. We keep going, yeah. So have you seen this news story coming out of Mexico? Mummified alien corpses are from single skeletons and they were not assembled, Mexican doctors claim. So basically what's happened in Mexico is some doctors and scientists and whoever have found these remains. I can actually show you what the remains are. So funny you're saying this. I literally had a I literally had the conversation today with Chris Lily today for 40 minutes about this. Um, Oh my god. Today I had a conversation. So not even joking. What they're saying is that uh, all these scientists around the world have said, okay, well, these doctors, these people have put the bones from humans together to make it look weird, to make it look like it's an alien, and they've assembled all these bones. And this particular doctor who has said he has found this in the past Thought he had found an alien before, but it was actually proven to be a deceased child. Anyway, so he's made a mistake. One mistake. Wait. Okay. Yep. Keep going. Yep. Oh, because yes, they said he lied about it before. That's a conversation I had. Yes, 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 yes. 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 And so now more Mexican doctors have come out and said, no, 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 these bones weren't assembled. They were found this way and they are not of a human. They cannot be of a human. They are too different to have, they're not in line with what's, oh God, what's the word? My brain just went dead. They're not in line with like, um, you know, DNA? mankind. Yeah. No, you know okay, how yeah. evolution, they're evolution. not in line with evolution that they look like they could fit into one point, you know, how we've gone from like gorilla to man. They don't fit mm-hmm. in the line. They're too mm-hmm. obscure. And mm-hmm. so... Basically, I just wanted to say on Spilling the Tequila that aliens exist and now we have proof. Well, 
We all know that aliens exist. Thank you for that, Grace. It's, oh, don't even get me started for this conversation. I feel like I'm at the UN right now and it's I'm my turn to the speak. The UN? And, yeah, wearing this. <laughs> um, but everyone that looked at it, right, was mm. said that, no, it looks like ET, that's so fake. My theory is anyone in the past for thousands of years, right, who has witnessed an alien, they yeah. always say, this is before movies and stuff, this is hundreds of years ago, they always sketch this oh shit sorry microphone they always sketch the same thing so for example the the uh the big head the little skinny body the one you just showed in the picture yeah, the big yeah. eyes and stuff like that that's that's like your you know what an alien of what humans think aliens look like but that also comes from humans witnessing their first encounter with an alien and they always mm -hmm. say it had big eyes it was really skinny it had a big head blah 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 had a human body but it was a little bit different kind of like um how uh, Steven Spielberg depicted it in, you know, ET and stuff like that in movies. Yes, yes. What people don't understand is because this has been happening for hundreds of years and it's all the same alien. Obviously, when Hollywood took over and made aliens a very popular thing, yeah, like it's mm -hmm. very now, mm -hmm. they made the alien look like what it looked like from how people described it from hundreds of years, which is the big head, the big eyes, and the small body. So yes. when people say, oh, they've just stolen it from the movie, it's not stolen from the movie. The movie stole it from witnesses people's that accounts seen people's accounts correct so that's why i believe this alien that's been shown from mexico um and what's annoying about it is if we were watching a movie right now yeah like a sci-fi film and someone's uh, yeah. like we found an alien and it's real look i've got evidence no everyone's like that's fake it looks like it's from et and everyone just blows it off and laughs about it and the guy's like no it's real it's real and everyone's like nah it's ET. and no one's believing it that's what they want to happen because the government doesn't want the world to freak out. Like that news should have been bigger than it was. And it just got brushed off as fake news. I just, yeah, Crazy. exactly. Has anyone, Crazy. has anyone ever watched the X-Files? That's what I want to know, because that's the entire plot of the X-Files, that this guy's at the center of government conspiracy. And like, he can't, he's trying to get the truth out there, but he can't because they're shutting him down. Like, Correct. hello, it's Correct. real life. I know. Uh, or no, um, I also think people who don't believe in like extraterrestrial beings mm. can't see past the end of their nose and are the type of people who believe the world revolves around them. Because if you really believe that we live on planet Earth in this universe where we can't even see like a quarter of what's out there, I mean, it mm. takes like nine billion years traveling at light speed to get to the edge of the foreseeable universe. Like if you think that we're the only things here, well, you might be a narcissist. Here's a good, a little theory for you. Have you not seen the creatures that are in the ocean? Like the calamari mm -hmm. that we all, have you seen a calamari? It's like the a giant alien squid? monster. The yes. giant squid and all these things. These things to me, what I think is they are aliens coming from other planets. When comets or meteorites go into earth, where do they go? They go into the water and they land there and it's got the molecules on it, which is aliens, and they turn into those sea creatures. That's I think the aliens are already here. Oh. Oh, sorry, you lost me on that one. I thought you were just making the point that, like, have you not seen those creatures? Have you not seen what's down there? Like, what do you think's up well, what there? What I'm saying is we just think they're part of Earth, but who's to say that they aren't aliens and they're just living I don't in know our water why ocean? Aliens would want to, like, come and stay, honestly. I'm sure that they have it better. I don't if know, they we've got can, a lot of water. If they've got UFOs, like, come on, that's awesome. And what about all the government now in America, how they have to release all the UFOs now and there's just millions of them because it seems, it's all coming out now. I think the world's ready. I think the world's ready. I'm ready. To accept it. I'm ready. Oh, hey. It's overdue. You, here's a good question for you. If you found out that aliens are real and pl other planets exist with other humans life. and other creatures and life out there, and you had the opportunity to go to that planet, yeah, and yeah. see what exists there. And, so, and you could survive there and stuff. As long as if you're going to die, they're going to kill you. It's like a swap swap thing. They would, you could go there and an alien could come here. That makes sense. The only, the only, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The only catch yes. is yes. you can never come back to Earth. Would no. you go? No. Oh, I would. No, I'm so scared. Are you kidding me? Oh. What, Why? I'm going alone with a bunch of aliens who I may not speak English, so I'm the only English speaker there. Um, <laughs> like, who am I going to talk to myself? 
I've got all these aliens around me. Like once again, watching X Files. What if you can bring a friend? Are. What if you can bring a friend? Imagine how exciting and that would be. You'd be you. the first person out of the human race to see what's out there. And yeah, but if you your... go, you can just text me. Tell me what it's like. I don't think the yeah, text we'll message have to, is we'll not going to send you on Earth. We'll have to Zoom for spilling the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> spilling anyway, the tequila live from Mars. <laughs> did um, did anyone write in funny. to Sunny Joe? Or do we have time? For Ask Sunny Joe? Uh, we could do an Express Ask Sunny Joe. Okay, let's do an Express one. What, Super you have a short Express. Question? Super yeah. Express. You ready? Yeah. Dear Sunny Joe, my mm-hmm. parents are sociable people. They love nothing more than sharing my news with everyone they know. I hate it. It makes me so anxious. I'm a naturally private person and I'm also insecure about what I have achieved or am yet to achieve in my 20s. I know I should just let go and not care of what people think, but I find it really hard. I also find it irritating on principle. It's not their news to share, so why do they need to broadcast it? I've told them about my anxieties, but they just lie and say they haven't spoken about me. I then hear otherwise off other people. What should I do? Uh, let's call her Trixie. Trixie. Uh, yeah, Trixie. Um, thank you for writing in. I'll make it a speed up one because our, uh, we've got another, we're interviewing someone. Um, but Trixie, thank you so much for writing in. Uh, it's a good one. Um, it's going to be a very, uh, vague answer because I don't have, or I don't know what your parents are telling the friends, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I said that line, but, um, in context of that, it sounds like your parents are very proud people, which is just amazing. And they are your parents. They gave birth to you. They put a roof over your head. I know it's, you know, I know you've got anxiety. It's nothing, but if parents are proud for you and they're talking really good behind your back to others, like, oh my God, like, you know, Trixie won her sport match or she got a straight A or she got, she started a new job and it's a really good job and she's happy. Let them be, man. You're their child. Like they're so proud of you to enter into this world of, something that you've succeeded in and they're proud of you. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. If it's something where, I don't know, they're releasing saying Trixie's pregnant and you haven't told anyone that you're pregnant. Fair call. I get you. That's not their business to tell everyone, but that's what I'm saying. I don't know what they're telling the friends, but by the sounds of what you wrote into what you wrote to us. Can you finish my sentence there, Grace? Yes. From what she said in her letter. From what you said in your letter, um, I just think that it sounds like they're proud parents. Um, if it is, you know me, it's all about communication, communication, communication. If you're getting anxiety about something and they're telling people, speak to your parents about it, I'm sure they're going to respect your needs um, if they're this happy about talking about you behind your back of how proud they are. I just think it's very, you know, there's a lot of parents out there that don't ask about their kids and don't boast about them to their friends and stuff. So you should be lucky that you get your parents who do this to other people and proud of you. I, I think it's very loving and I think it's a very nice gesture. Yeah, I agree with that. I also see her point that if they're talking about what she doesn't have or hasn't done or hasn't achieved, that that could oh, be was particularly that in the question annoying. As well? Yeah. Did she say that? Oh, I must have missed that. Okay, Trixie, that's annoying. That's annoying. Because- yeah. Because especially if you have people, I mean, it's one thing, right? Say Trixie lives in in Melbourne and her parents live mm. in Perth. It's one thing if her parents are all around Perth saying, oh, you know, Trixie's looking for a new job or Trixie's doing this or Trixie's doing that. And you don't see the people from Perth, so it never comes back to you. But if you're still in Perth and then you're bumping into your parents' friends who are coming up saying, oh, have you found that job yet? Oh, have you done this yet? Well, then, yeah, I think like, oh, my God, come on, guys, like just zip it a little bit. Okay, fair call. Let me, let me sort my shit that. out before you broadcast it. You yeah, know? I do agree with that. If they're telling people like, oh, she hasn't got a job or she's not, she's she hasn't mm. bought a house yet, she's still renting, like yes. that's kind of your business. Yes. And stop telling people that. Okay, I agree with that. Then you just need to tell your parents to fuck off if they're <laughs> doing that. Yeah, that's true. That's annoying. That's that's obviously don't tell your parents to fuck off. Yeah, but they need it depends. To... It depends what they're what news they're spreading. Correct. Mm. It depends what news they're spreading. That's what I said. I think I wish you gave examples in your question because then we could answer that more. Because we don't have those examples. It's just why does that word sound weird? 
That sounds great. Example. It's like you say France or dance. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Examples. Or if you gave us more examples, we could answer it. But other than that, be proud that you've got both parents that are alive, that are proud of you, yes. who are rooting for you. And if they are spreading news that they're being too nosy about stuff you don't have to friends, you need to communicate that and say, oh, zip your lips. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's a good place to end it. Otherwise, I'm putting a mushroom cap in your burger. No, I'm joking. I shouldn't say stuff like that. <laughs> Touchy subject. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Spilling the Tequila, everybody at home. Yes, thank you. And also watching now that we do videos. And I hope watching. you're enjoying this. I think we keep we forgetting that. Yeah, we do. That was a great episode. And it's that always was a good nice to catch episode. up with you, Gracie. Yeah, ditto, Sonny. Yeah. Good Where are chat. you? I'm in, studio- I'm in Studio 7 today. What number are you in? I'm in number four. Oh, I haven't been in four. Yeah, it's good lighting. <laughs> Good lighting. Good lighting. Okay. Thanks, right, guys. Bye, Make guys. sure you follow, leave a review, blah, 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 blah. Comment, share our episodes. It'd be really great. We enjoy doing this. Here, so, all it takes is just give us a follow on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. Exactly what Grace said. I'm just repeating what she said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, reinforce. thank you. We love you. We okay. love you long time. Bye. Spilling the tequila. Ch-ch-ch.